So today we have back this 2009 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD with the 6.6 .6 Dirty Max LMM engine. It's uh, I'm sure it stands for a lot more money. It's had a history of transmission issues. Uh, I started working on it back in June or July and I've put a switch plate on the valve body inside the transmission. Um, I put a transmission controller in it at one point. There's the transmission controller there. And back in December, uh, he complained about it going into limp mode, first gear only. So let's have a look at the history on this. So here's the vehicle history from July 30th. And it had a park neutral position switch circuit fault. And I ended up changing the uh, transmission computer for that. Uh, I do have a video on that. Let's see. Then back in October, yeah, 10 26th, it was back again. Uh, brake switch problem, it wouldn't come out of park. Uh, there's a video on that one as well. Then back in December, December 3rd, I stopped at his yard because the transmission was stuck in first gear. P0700 code in the PCM, but this is what we had P0757 shift solenoid 2 valve stuck off or stuck on I should say um, I cleared the code the transmission worked fine now it was fairly cool that day now it's since come back so here's the vehicle was brought in today in first gear uh, it has an EGR problem there's the P0700 transmission code in the PCM I'm not sure why this theft deterrent key code is there but here's the codes that were in it today when it got here P0757 shift solenoid performance stuck on and 756 stuck off so let's have a look at the electrical circuit so here's the troublemaker chart for P0757 which is shift solenoid 2 valve performance stuck on basically what it has inside the transmission are several shift solenoids that control the oil flow to various clutch packs then it has switches in the transmission valve body to signal whether the shift has actually taken place. So there are three pressure switches that are normally used. Pressure switch signal 1 is for shift solenoid 1, pressure switch signal 2 is for shift solenoid 2, and pressure switch signal 3 is for shift solenoid 3. What it states basically is this code is set If the solenoid is commanded off, but the switch remains on for up to 15 seconds, depending on transmission fluid temperature. Now, back in December, the early part of December, the code was in history. I cleared it. The transmission worked just fine. Uh, it was driven here in first gear this afternoon, and the codes were in history. I cleared it, and it's just shifting just fine now. If you try to do the... Uh, the test procedure, of course, it's an intermittent problem, so you can't really use the test procedure. So I'm going to call the pressure switch manifold, but while we're in there, we're going to change shift solenoid number two. It's only like 40 bucks, so it's uh, not that much more work to change the shift solenoid. Let's have a look at the pressure switches. So here are the four pressure switches. Pressure switch one is low, pressure switch two is low, pressure switch three is low, and pressure switch four is high. And that's the way they're supposed to be in park idling. If I turn the key off, so I've turned the key off and then to shut the engine off and then back on. And the three switches change state back to high, 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 and low. So the switches are working fine but this one here I suspect indicates high when it should indicate low and that's what causes the code to set. Now that could be the shift solenoid sticking actually applying pressure to it or it could be a faulty pressure switch. Because it's intermittent and it appears to happen only when it's cold uh, I'm gonna have to throw some parts at it and hope that fixes it. So we'll get some parts ordered up for it because it's Christmas holidays everything's back ordered and slow to get so I probably won't see these parts until the first part of January 
So here's the troubleshooting chart for this uh, P0757 code. It says to remove the uh, valve body or the oil pan on the transmission and remove the pressure switch from the, leave, it in, in, leave it connected and using the pencil of an er, eraser of a pencil push on the switch to make it change state and verify that the scan tool shows switch one, two, three, change state from high to low. Well, it's working now, so I can't really test that. If it's fine, then it says to replace the affected solenoid. If the valve body inspection is normal, place the shift solenoid indicated by the DTC. So that's my logic. We're not going to replace the, the pressure switch and the, and the uh, shift solenoid number two. So we're back working on this 2009 Silverado 2500 HD uh, 66 30 max. Today we're going to change the uh, pressure switches assembly in the transmission. That's the part number there. 2429348. And we're also going to change the uh, shift solenoid in question there it is there uh, because it was intermittently set a fault code for the pressure solenoid stuck off or on I can't remember it's in the video earlier um, so we got to drop this tranny pan see if the drain plug will come out maybe we can save some of the fluid because this has been off a couple of times now I did start this thing twice in the last few days uh, in cold weather and although it's been fairly mild and it hasn't acted up that's why we're going in to change these parts so we'll uh, get the pan off and have a look inside so there's the trans pan off I was able to drain it remove it it has a reusable gasket plus I changed it last time we were here so this is the switch plate it has several pressure switches in it so what we're going to do is we're going to unbolt the switch plate there's one, two, three, four, five, six bolts. And we're going to drop it down but leave it connected. And then we're going to operate the switches with a pencil, a pencil uh, with an eraser on the end of it. Uh, they're little pressure switches. And we'll watch the status of the switches on the scan tool while we operate them. So there's the bottom or the top side view of these four pressure switches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this plastic pen and you have to ground this. So I'm going to apply this one three times, this one three times, you can't really feel any difference. Let's have a look at what the data did. Well, I pressed the switches three times each. Switch three changed once, switch four never changed. So this is the first one, second one, and I'm not sure why this one didn't register. Is there a high, high, and high, and this one's normally closed, so that's low. If I take that ground wire off, they're all high. So I'm gonna, I've got a custom data list here so that it's you know, the refresh rate is quicker. I'm going to try this again. I'm going to do them in the same order. Okay, first one. So let's pause that. So they all responded. So there's the first one, second one, third one, fourth one. Just got to wait for the refresh rate of the scan tool to pick it up. Well, we're going to go ahead and replace that. We're also going to replace that shift solenoid 
uh, with shift solenoid 2, which I have to figure out which one is which here. On load. So here's the recording that I took on December the 29th. It was shift solenoid 2, performance stuck off, but it's based on that switch changing state. So if that switch sticks when it's cold, then we could have this fault. It could also be the solenoid stuck as well. Here we got a stuck on and stuck off. So we're going to change shift solenoid 2. Now I got to figure out which one that is. So I'm going to use this bi-directional control to command the shift solenoid on and off so I can figure out which one it is. Stupid furnace is running right now, so it's hard to hear it clicking, so I'll have to go underneath the vehicle. So I'm going to go underneath the vehicle. So there's four solenoids, and I think this is shift solenoid two. Now my compressor is running on top of the furnace. When I command the shift solenoid on and off with the scan tool, I can hear that one clicking. I can feel that one clicking. So we're gonna disconnect it and make sure that shift solenoid too. Well, the solenoid's easy enough to change. There's a little U-shaped clip right here. You can just pull it down with a pick, a 90 degree pick. Once you disconnect the electrical connector and the solenoid will just pop out. Uh, I checked the pin grip on these terminals here to make sure that there was no loose terminals, although that shouldn't have set a high pressure switch. It should have set a low pressure switch code if it was an open circuit. Anyways, uh, 108 inch pounds on these bolts, and for some reason this bolt on this transmission was slightly longer, about a quarter of an inch longer. Um, I'm not sure if that's proper or not, because this valve body has been apart, this transmission has been apart many times. It's not bottomed out in the threads, I double checked, so we're going to put the pan back on and fill it up, put the flu uh, filter back in and the pan back on and fill it up and test it. So it's back together and running in park at an idle. Switch 1 shows low, switch 2 shows low, switch 3 shows low, and switch 4 shows high, which is normal. Now, we're going to have to let this thing be driven for several days and hopefully get well, not hopefully, I hope it stays nice and warm, but chances are, being as how we're in January, it's going to be minus 20, minus 30 again in a couple of days. And we'll see if this thing acts up. Let's hope it's fixed. 